Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're going to discuss if Ryzen 6000 laptops are worth buying or not, or who should buy Ryzen 6000, who should like hold off for the next generation Zen 4 Ryzen 7000, or should we just buy Intel 12 Gen? So we're not going to waste any time. Let's get straight to the facts. Okay, so first of all, let's discuss what are the benefits of Ryzen 6000. Okay, so over Ryzen 5000, which is based on the Zen 3 architecture on the 7 nanometer processing node by TSMC, Ryzen 6000 is based on a slightly more efficient 6 nanometer node by TSMC. However, the overall architecture is just the same. Uh, there are some small tweaks here and there, which is why, you know, uh, AMD is calling it Zen 3 Plus. So overall, it's an evolution. No, obviously not a revolution so there are no claimed ipc advantages for the ryzen 6000 parts that is n3 plus has no ipc uplift which basically means that if you keep a ryzen 6000 chip against a ryzen 5000 chip and you lock both of them at the same frequency then both will perform exactly the same there will be no difference in performance because there is no claimed ipc advantage However, due to the 6 nanometer processing node, the Ryzen 6000 part is a little bit more efficient, which is why it is able to clock slightly higher in the same TDP, uh, which is why overall the performance is a little bit higher, like about, you know, at max 10%, you know, it's generally around 5 to 10%. So it's not a big upgrade when it comes to the CPU performance. But yeah, due to the presence of, you know, uh, slightly higher clocks and also the fact that Ryzen 6000 uses DDR5 RAM, so you get an overall slight uplift in overall real world performance, but it is not that much. Where the Ryzen 6000 really shines is in terms of the integrated GPU. So right now Ryzen 6000 has shifted from the age old Vega graphics, which has been used since years now to the new RDNA 2 iGPU, which means the performance of the integrated graphics has increased by almost double, more than double, I would say. So if you are buying a laptop which has a dedicated GPU, which most of you guys are like my audience is mostly, you know, into gaming laptops and they generally come with a dedicated GPU, let's say an NVIDIA GPU or a Radeon GPU. I wouldn't really advise you to pay the premium for Ryzen 6000 because on those laptops, you will be mostly using the dedicated GPU. You will not be relying on the integrated GPU. However, if you're buying a thin and light laptop, let's say something like a Lenovo IdeaPad uh, Slim or uh, Lenovo ThinkPad or you know Acer Aspire series, uh, HP Envy, HP Spectre series, these types of ultrabook type of laptops. These laptops will benefit a lot in terms of graphics performance due to the integrated RDNA 2 iGPU. And I'm not joking guys, the Ryzen 6800U uh, APU features 12 CUs, 12 compute units in its RDNA 2 iGPU which performs almost neck to neck with a GTX 1650 Max-Q, which is amazing considering you can fit it in a really thin and light chassis. And you know, due to the upgrade in the Radeon RDNA 2 iGPUs, you can basically expect improvements, not just in gaming performance, but as well if you use those laptops in, you know, in video editing and all that. Because the Radeon iGPU inside the uh, inside the Ryzen 6000 series also has better encoding decoding support so overall it's a boost when it comes to your overall anything that you that uses the GPU so if you're buying a laptop that doesn't feature a dedicated GPU and you will have to rely on the integrated GPU for you know slight gaming a little bit of video editing you know uh, you know if you want to play emulation games let's say you're uh, uh, emulating a console like a PlayStation 2 games or PlayStation 1 games on your thin and light notebook then it's worth paying the premium for Ryzen 6000 APUs. Now, I don't know what the price will be for such uh, laptops uh, with the Ryzen 6000 APUs because those 300 laptops have not yet launched. In fact, Ryzen 6000 launch has been quite lackluster. Um, I don't think TSMC is able to, you know, manage that load uh, because because of the silicon shortage and uh, the pandemic, uh, the production hasn't been in full force so you can see ryzen 6000 launch is very lackluster there are very few options available so depending on the price so let's say if you find a ryzen 7 6800 u laptop uh, 5000 rupees more than a ryzen 7 5800 u laptop then i will obviously say definitely those 5000 rupees is worth it because the uplift in performance is pretty big it's pretty major in terms of the gpu and ryzen 6000 also introduces some more quality of life improvements like ddr5 ram i said 
and the other major thing is the support for usb 4 now i was quite excited for usb 4 because it's i think 40 gigabits per second that's the full bandwidth of usb 4 uh, which means it should be backwards compatible with thunderbolt 3 however i don't think i've seen any laptop that has implemented the full usb 4 uh, variant in any laptop which enables thunderbolt 3 backwards compatibility uh, i'm not sure if the microsoft there's a microsoft surface laptop i think so which also features ryzen 6000 series cpus and i think that one has a, a thunderbolt 3 backwards compatible uh, usb c4 port but i'm not sure however this can be a big uh, upgrade if manufacturers decide to put you know full bandwidth usb c ports uh you know usb 4 ports which will be backwards compatible with uh, thunderbolt 3 but i'm yet to see that and you know at last it's the battery life improvement so this is where i like to credit uh, uh amd for their really laser focus on efficiency because laptops you know they have limited amount of power so you cannot just make a cpu that performs very fast and it's very powerful and at the same time it's really inefficient that is it requires a lot of power to reach that high performance that doesn't really work well with laptops so in this case ryzen 6000 has managed to overall give you a slight bump in performance in the cpu department at the same time taking less power that is a pretty good uh, achievement that i would like to say that is what we want in laptops we want gaming laptops you know this trend started with ryzen 4000 you know gaming laptops with good battery life that was kind of unheard of and it is kind of still unheard of in the intel department the benefits of ryzen 6000 uh, is small so it really depends upon the price uh, if the ryzen 6000 laptop if a similar ryzen 6000 laptop with the same type of display same same gpu and all that is coming at a big premium over the ryzen 5000 option then i would say skip ryzen 6000 uh, and just you know consider buying discounted ryzen 5000 laptops because the performance is quite similar and if you have a dedicated gpu then you will have no difference in then you will have like basically no difference uh, in terms of graphics performance because you will not be using the integrated gpu at that time because you have a dedicated gpu however as i said if you if you buy a laptop that is thin and light and doesn't have a dedicated gpu and you want to rely only on the integrated gpu then obviously ryzen 6000 is a really big uplift okay now let's talk about ryzen 7000 and this is what i am personally waiting for so ryzen 7000 uh, is coming out you know end of this year or early next year uh, in in laptops the apus that are coming out so zen 4 this one will be a big counter punch from um, amd uh, to intel because intel is you know is in the lead right now when it comes to performance they have more cores and they clock higher and they have higher ipc than uh, ryzen at the moment yes they need a lot more power that is true but overall in terms of performance you know intel is ahead so you know the desktop market is a big market and at the moment intel is in the lead so uh, you know amd has to come up with a really big upgrade with zen 4 and i i'm pretty sure it will be a big upgrade you know kind of uh, amd is kind of underplaying at the moment i'm sure it is a lot more than 15 percent uh, ipc upgrade that amd is claiming i'm pretty sure it's going to be in the range of 20 to 35 percent uh you know you can see that intel comes up with a new um like generation of cpus every let's say one year or so whereas amd is like every two years or so so this time amd really has to come up with a big upgrade I'm, and i'm pretty sure it will be a big upgrade they have increased their tdps also from you know uh, 105 watts to 170 watts they're using the you know ddr5 in their uh, desktops and overall i'm pretty sure it's going to be a big upgrade and that all those upgrades you know amd is focused on efficiency where they are you know they don't require as much power to reach those high frequencies and um high performance you know they don't require that much power as as much as intel so that philosophy will carry very well towards the laptop so the laptop apus that they are calling as a dragon range which will be in laptops more than 20 millimeter thick which will have a base tdp of 55 watts whereas other laptops will be in the range of 35 to 45 watt that is under 20 millimeters so you can expect them to have really great performance as well as great efficiency intel is in the opposite side they scale very well with high po high power draw so the more power you feed the more performance the uh 
intel chip will provide you however since their base level and the idle power draw is so much higher than amd it really doesn't um, you know bode well with uh, laptops you can see that I've, I've seen almost every 12 gen laptop suffering with poor battery life so your 12 gen may provide you the best performance you know the more cores and you know higher clock speeds and all that but at the same time it's drawing so much more power that the battery life is so much worse whereas with ryzen 6000 that i have seen the performance isn't as good as 12 gen but the performance is really good enough as well the battery life is far better than 12 gen so i can only imagine how good ryzen 7000 in laptops will be you know the big performance boost when, when it comes to you know clock speeds ipc gains and at the same time you'll have good battery life uh, and also what i'm hearing is a dragon range series that is that will be in laptops more than 20 20 millimeter thick so in the dragon range series the ryzen 9 apu will have 16 cores and the ryzen 7 apu will probably have 12 cores this is rumors only but this is what is looking like in the dragon range series there will be an up in core counts so that's great news for those looking into you know high performance amd laptops you know because of the advantage in efficiency so Ryzen 7000 no doubt will be a really big upgrade over Ryzen 5000, Ryzen 6000 uh, and I think in my opinion it is worth waiting for Ryzen 7000 if you're not looking to purchase a laptop right now. So I'm not sure if I would recommend you to purchase a Ryzen 6000 laptop unless and until they are you know within the same price bracket of Ryzen 5000 laptop because right now the laptop that I'm seeing launched that is from Asus, the Asus Tough series and the Asus uh, ROG Strix series they are quite overpriced in my opinion I know they have uh, the MUX switches but I don't care man MUX switch won't make an RTX 3050 into an RTX 3060 nor will it make an RTX 3060 into a 3070 that won't happen MUX switch will only help you in you know esports titles to get over like 400 FPS however if your display is capped at 144 hertz or 240 hertz even if you don't have a MUX switch you can reach that FPS so your display is the bottleneck you, you cannot see uh higher fps you than 240 fps so even if you get like 500 fps with a mux switch it won't ma it won't matter because you cannot see it on your laptop display and if you connect an external monitor then obviously every laptop will bypass the nvidia optimus limit so i don't think a mux switch will will necessarily shift your purchase decision and uh, you know the prices are a little bit I mean not a little bit they're pretty high i'm sure they will go down as ryzen 6000 becomes more and more common uh so yeah right now they are not worth it in my opinion they are just clearly not worth it and the asus tough series is definitely not worth it because one lakh twenty five thousand rupees for a laptop with a display which has only 45 percent ntsc no man no i would instead recommend you to get the asus tough with the i5 11400h with an rtx 3060 thunderbolt 4 port that sells for around 89,000 rupees or 85,000 rupees even that is like way better value for money and at like 1 lakh 20,000 20,000 rupees I would recommend you to get the legion 5 with the 5800h and then RTX 3060 that is a better deal in my opinion so overall I would like to conclude by saying that if you're not looking to purchase a laptop right now let's say the sales are coming in October sales are coming if you're not looking to purchase a laptop then I would say just wait for it wait for ryzen 7000 to drop and then buy a laptop because that will be a big generational leap however if you are looking to purchase a laptop right now that is this year you are in an emergency then you really have to weigh your options you know whether the benefits of ryzen 6000 is worth it to you if they if the ryzen 5000 option the ryzen 6000 option are in the similar price category there's barely any difference like let's say like 1000 2000 rupee difference then you can go for the ryzen 6000 laptop otherwise i would say save your money and go for the ryzen 5000 laptop and if you're purchasing an ultrabook type of laptop where there is no use of dedicated gpu then you know if the ryzen 6000 option is you know in the same price range you know let's say there is a difference of 4000 5000 rupees then i would say yeah then you can probably go for the ryzen 6000 option because the gpu difference is big so yeah that's all i wanted to share in this video guys thank you so much for watching uh do like share and subscribe and also comment down below what you think about ryzen 6000 and what you think about ryzen 7000 i think ryzen 7000 will be a big upgrade uh but yeah fingers crossed so yeah thank you so much for watching guys and i'll catch you in the next one take care peace